Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. This is Deb McBride, and today is Sunday, the 10th of April in the year 2022, and it is Palm Sunday if you are of that faith, and next Sunday is Easter Sunday when we meet again. In the meantime, well, let's talk about astrology, <laughs> and um, I am broadcasting from beautiful Escazú, Costa Rica, where the birds are chirping, and the rain has started, not today yet, but um, we are getting, we're definitely getting into that rainy season, so um, maybe a little cozier for sure, but in the meantime, um, lots of things are going on and things are big this coming week. So we need to pay attention to that. So I'm going to start with the biggest, biggest, biggest thing of the week. And that is that Jupiter and Neptune will conjunct exactly at 1042 AM on Tuesday, the 12th at, uh, Eastern time. So that's 1042 AM Eastern for me, that'll be 842 AM. And this is a profound, profound conjunction. Now I've been talking about it for a while and I talked about it on Instagram the other day and we're going to talk about it again because Jupiter and Neptune have not met in Pisces since 1865. And this is because Neptune is so slow and Neptune moves, you know, once every 160 something years through the whole Zodiac. So in the time that it takes, um, it's only going to go to Pisces once every, you know, hundred some odd and something years, like 50 something, 150 something years. And one of the things that's so important about this is that, um, these are generational aspects. And that means that it affects the collective unconscious and it affects the generation for people that are born, you know, people who are having kids in these last, you know, 10 years that this has been the case where Neptune's in Pisces. And the fact that Neptune's in its own sign and it's generationally, like back then there was a whole spiritual awakening and, you know, there's the ridiculous to the sublime, you know, there's obviously deep spirit and then there's charlatans and, you know, people who don't take things seriously or do it for, you know, a facade or something that's, it's not real. And you have to be very careful with Pisces and Neptune because you have to determine what is real and what is not. Now, Neptune, as I've said before, rules the film industry. And what do we do when we go to a film? We enjoy it. It's entertaining. It's lovely, you know, or it's exciting in the thriller or whatever, but it's not real. It's not a real thing. Okay. Biographies. There are biographical films, of course, but the biographical films also, you know, unless it's a documentary, a lot of these things are not like they, they, tweak it a little bit, you know, well, let's leave that part of the the story out and let's leave this part of the story out or let's bring this part of the story, let's tweak that part of the story, you know. So what you're seeing, and of course, even in a film that's made, that's, you know, you're not seeing everything. You know, we watched Changing of the Gods, um, the astrological docuseries that was on in February and March. And um, it was very interesting because I looked at some of the behind the scenes uh, videos and the woman who was doing the interviews of the astrologers was sitting and talking to people and there was like a building around her. She was like in a big space and she was sitting in a chair and with a big screen in front of her talking. And there was like a window and there were buildings with lights outside. She looked like she was like in a studio in a big city. And, you know, she was in a studio somewhere. I don't know where, because when I saw the back end videos, she was in, there were green screens. And so those projections of the buildings weren't, you know, they weren't real. So I really thought she was in a city until I saw this. And I'm like, oh, she was like in a studio with no windows. And they adjusted it to show us that, you know, there's a city out there, but there wasn't, I'm sure there was outside of the studio where there were no windows or whatever. But this was really fascinating to me because we, even in the astrology program, we saw a filmed view, a, 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 there's a veil, and that's what Neptune does. And this is something really important to pay attention to because when we get a dose of Neptune, especially in Pisces, its own sign, we have to discern and tap into spirit so well that we're not being conned or exploited or fooled in some way. And this is something 
that can happen with any Neptunian contact. And you may spend years questioning something like, I'm working with this guru and I'm not sure that this is the right thing and da da da. And you have to like really tap in. And this is where Neptune comes in very clearly. You have to, you know, it's a veil, but you are, you know, pushed. And if you're listening, you're pushed into focusing really hard. And I've talked about this before here where Neptune is about, you know, the fog. So what happens when you're driving in the fog? You are driving so slowly and so carefully and so much with your eyes on the road and you've got your headlights on and maybe your high beams on and you are driving so that you can see clearly in what is fog five feet in front of you. You don't know if another car is coming. You don't know what kind of road you're on. You don't know what the turn is coming up because the fog is so dense. And this is how Neptune operates. So if we are working with a real Neptunian energy, such as we are when Neptune is in its own sign of Pisces, we have to determine what's real and what's not. And that is up to our gut. There is only one way. People can tell you things. Oh, I didn't believe those people. Oh, I don't believe that. Um, You know, people are going to believe different things. People are going to gravitate towards different things. It's important with Neptune and Pisces that we are clear what spirituality means to us. If you're inclined in that way, some people are not. You know, some people are just not spiritual. They, they are content in their material world. They do fine there. A lot of us um, need to be connected to some sort of truth or some connection to a, a, something greater than ourselves. And that's what Neptune and Pisces offers us. And with Jupiter, Jupiter being the traditional ruler of Pisces, um, before Neptune was discovered. And if you are a user of the Vedic system and you do not use the outer planets, the Vedic system uses Jupiter as a ruler of Pisces and Jupiter and Neptune coming together is a deep, deep, deep connection to faith, deep connections to faith and trust right now. And we are so there we're so, I mean, Neptune, Neptune and Jupiter are already together. They've been together for a while, but now they're minutes away from each other because it's they're slower moving and, you know, they won't really join for another two days. So we're looking at this in a very, very, you know, microscopic way to tap into what is truth and what the answers are and what they're, you know, you know, many times Neptune and Pisces don't present us with reality, like when we're watching a film, but we are being presented with a version of reality. And what version is that that we're looking at? What version of that are we tapping into and how are we um, assimilating that? Is it really true? Is it not true? Or where is the truth in this for me? What is truth for you may not be truth for another person. And that is why there are religious wars, because people have truths that are different from each other and they cannot agree. And it isn't necessary to get into a war with someone, you know, maybe because you believe in something that they don't. And I always say that astrology is not a belief system. Um, People always throw it into the pile of believing something. Astrology is an alchemical vocabulary. It's an alchemical language. It really is not, um, it's not Judaism. It's not Christianity, as we, you know, mentioned Palm Sunday earlier. It's not, and this is a very deep time. I mean, we've got, you know, Passover starts on Friday and Friday is Good Friday. And here where I live, it is a particularly religious country. And this is a holy week. And people, this is the big vacation week of the year where people go away and they go to the beach and they go to their families and they spend this time, um, you know, traveling. And, and so this is not a time for people to go to the beach if you're coming from outside of Costa Rica, <laughs> because you're not, you're not going to find a place to stay unless you booked it like well, well, well in advance. But anyway, that's, that's the story it's, you know, this is Holy Week. And so I find it interesting that here we are in the midst of Holy Week and we have this Jupiter Neptune conjunction, which is all about spirit. You know, the last degree of Pisces, which Jupiter is going to see in 
May because it's going to move into Aries in May for a few months and then go back into Pisces, but we'll stay at the end of Pisces. And so Jupiter is going to really see the end of Pisces a number of times this year. And my teacher used to tell us that like 29 Pisces is Christ on the cross. It's, it's the surrender. It's the atonement. It's Christ on the cross. And as we approach this Holy Week, um, this is profoundly what we're looking at. We're looking at surrender and in staying with, you know, the highest and the path and trusting the path and trusting if that you're staying in your highest, that you're going to be led to the right things. So it's all about faith. It's all about trust right now. And this is deeply, deeply, deeply important for all of us. Jupiter and Neptune, yes, they get together every 12 years, but they don't get together in Pisces every 12 years. Jupiter goes to Pisces every 12 years. Neptune's not there. So this is it. This is the moment. They're not coming together again when Jupiter goes to Aries and then comes right back into Pisces again. When it's retrogrades back into Pisces, Jupiter's not going to visit Neptune again. This is the moment. So light your candle, say your prayer, do your ritual, um, reach out for the sky, reach out for spirit, reach to Mother Nature and connect with something greater than yourself this week. This is the most important thing you can do this week, is connecting with something bigger and greater that you can put your faith and trust in. And know that you are taken care of. And that's so important, so important. My coach that I work with here, Yerlin Ramirez, she she's a very trusting person of the universe. And she doesn't even understand, like we talked about this, She's like, why can't people just trust? Why don't you just trust? It's there. And she has incredible faith. And she, it, it, things come to her. And this is, this is the truth. When you have faith that everything is in your highest and you're serving the light and that's your intention, nothing gets in the way. You free yourself of the obstacles. You free yourself of whatever's in your way. You free yourself of this thing that says, what if, but, 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 and the intrusive thoughts and the, and the, you know, the thinking, the thinking. Pisces is not a thinking sign. It is a sign of water. It's a sign that's mutable. It's flexible. It's a sign that's, you know, it's about feeling. We're feeling here. We're not, we're not analyzing and thinking. That was 12 years ago when Jupiter and Neptune were in Aquarius. There was more analysis there and thinking. Now we're not thinking. Thinking is a heavier energy. It's about feeling. It's about trusting. It's about having faith. And, you know, when we deal with the faith realms, it can be, and she was saying this to us the other day, that it can be terrifying to just have faith. And I think that she, she says that's the hardest part in having trust. For her, it's easy. For her, there's no question, but we're always tested. Each and every one of us is tested all the time. No matter how deep your faith goes in whatever you believe in, Whatever satisfies you, whatever speaks to your life, no matter how deep you go, there's still another layer to trust and listen to. So we're listening this week and we're connecting to something greater than ourselves and we are connecting with deep spirit. That's the job of the week. Everything else, <laughs> everything else I'm going to talk about this week is fine and good, but it's, that's the big one. That is the real big one. So take your moment and find spirit. That's, that's the big, big lesson of the week. And it can be very satisfying, and I hope that it is for you. Meanwhile, today is Sunday, and Mercury, in the wee hours of the morning, squared Pluto on its way out of Aries, and like left Pluto, who's at 28, Capricorn. Um, so Capricorn and Aries are squared, and... Mercury made his last aspect left and um, left the aspect. And now he will find his way into the sign of Taurus tonight. Now that's going to be at 10.09 Eastern time. And for me, it'll be 8.09 p.m. And, you know, he's in the last moments of Aries. When he moves into Taurus, little Mercury, he's, you know, he's not as speedy in Taurus. He's more reflective. He's more earthbound. He's more grounded. So our thoughts, we can expect to be really grounded this week. And it's very important to stay grounded in this 
this week in this moment. And when we have such lofty Jupiter Neptune happening, it's important to, to keep the grounding going and keeping itself, um, keeping ourselves um, tethered to something. And when we, you know, the other thing about Jupiter and Neptune is, like I said, you don't know what's real and what's not. People who are not paying a lot of attention, and this is why we need to pay attention, could get swept into something that is false. And there could be pie in the sky things that are not real for us. Like, I believe in this, and it's not necessarily the truth. So let's keep our feet on the ground with Mercury. And, you know, we'll be staying focused on what that, what reality and what the world looks like. So we still have our work to do on earth and we still have, you know, feet on the ground and our spirit open to receive. Um, what's really interesting is that by the time we reach Easter next Sunday, Mercury will be conjunct Uranus. And, you know, of course I'll be back on, you know, for that on Sunday, but Mercury's conjunct Uranus, which is very energetic, very energetic. It's, it's a very strong, you know, Mercury and Uranus are brilliant together. They're brilliant, but, and they can give us some incredible ideas. So it's great to tap in to that energy to come up with ideas that you need, creative ideas, especially in Taurus, things that can work and maybe bring you money. That's the job of Taurus. Ideas that can work and maybe bring you money. That's a good thing. So when we, when we, but this is what's crazy. Uranus is at 13, Taurus. That's almost halfway through the sign. Right now I'm looking at my little chart and Mercury is at 29 Aries. By next Sunday, Mercury will have flown through almost half of the sign of Taurus. And that means by the time we get to, you know, the following week, you know, um, Mercury is going to be going into Gemini not long after that. You know, it's going to get slower because, you know, Mercury is going to go retrograde in, in uh, sort of the first third of May. And that that's really, um, that's when it, it goes into Gemini, it's going to turn around. But, but this, it's flying through Taurus right now, which is, it, well, it's going to fly through Taurus, um, which is very interesting because Taurus is a very... Um, methodical and slower sign. So that's part of what's going on. And um, the other thing is that on Tuesday when Jupiter and Neptune meet, um, the sun in Aries will sextile Saturn and it will be sure to ground us even further. That's a very smooth aspect. It provides us with opportunity. The sun in Aries, sextiling Saturn in Aquarius is a very nice, like even keeled, like there's fire and there's air. So we're thinking and taking action, thinking and taking action, aligned action. And so that works very well for us. Now, um, as we speak, Venus is in Pisces and Venus is now definitely separated from Mars. Venus is at five degrees or a little over five and a half degrees of Pisces and Mars is still at 26 degrees and a half of Aquarius. So they're fully separated now. But this week on Thursday, Mars is going to enter Pisces at 11.06 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday the 14th. And that's what's interesting here um, because we're getting to a point where those, you know, those two are going to join each other and they're going to be in the same sign again, but they're not going to be conjunct. They'll be joining each other in the water sign, but they're not, you know, on top of each other in traveling, which I think is a good thing. First of all, Venus loves to be in Pisces. She's exalted there. She feels free there. She can be compassionate and beautiful there. It's a blessing for her to be there, and it is a blessing to us for the goddess to be in Pisces. So this is really, really lovely. Now, Venus will eventually meet the Jupiter and the Neptune at the end of the month, which I've talked about before, and that's also going to be very special. But Mars goes into Pisces. Mars is still in the last degrees of Aquarius. Mars will go into Pisces, and it won't be aggravating Venus like it was. And I think it was an agitation. I think a lot of people were definitely uh, assuming we were going to have some sort of great love happen, <laughs> and, and that probably wasn't 
you know, it was a good time for passion. There were people who met people that was like a really good initiation of relationships or reunions and, and stuff with people. Um, but I found that Mars and Mars was Mars can be an agitating energy. Remember, it's a, it's an aggressive energy. It can be in Pisces less so, but um, more on that in a minute. But it won't be. It, it, Venus is you know now she'll be between Mars and Jupiter. That's a very different energy than when she was between Mars and Saturn. Because now Mars is past Saturn because it went to Saturn, you know, a week ago and. We're glad that's over too. You know, Mars is past Saturn. Saturn's at 22. Mars is at 26, Aquarius. So the energy from that is waning and slowing down because there was, it was a lot of tension last week for a few days there. Even up till like Thursday, it was, it was hard. But um, really, Venus is past that. She's with Mars. So she's still, you know, being, um, you know, stepping out, being confident. But she's with Jupiter, which is, a beautiful thing and then eventually she'll be between Jupiter and Neptune and then with Neptune and and so that's that's going to be very interesting and profound um so three plant the three planets that love Pisces the most the three planets that do are in Pisces so this is a blessed time and so Mars which doesn't love Pisces um, and it's not in detriment there or anything it's just kind of strange because Mars loves to assert and Pisces does not. Pisces intuits and then may act accordingly if necessary, but can Pisces is going to call things in, call energy in. Mars, this is a time to be able to, you know, be confident about calling spirit in, calling in energy once Mars goes into Pisces. And Mars will be there for a good six weeks or so. So that's, that's good in that way. Now, Mars and Pisces can be a little underhanded. Remember, it's action taken, but Pisces is covert. Remember before I said you don't know if it's for your good or for not. That's why you've got to tune in really hard. We're going to have four planets in Pisces next time you and I meet. So that's that's deep, you know. So now, again, as things travel, remember there were clumps. There were clumps in, in <laughs> clumps of planets in Capricorn, then clumps of planets in Aquarius and Pisces and Aries all at the same time. So we still have the Sun and Mercury and Chiron and Aries until tonight when Mercury goes in to um, Taurus. And then it's going to be a smattering of things in Taurus, things in Aries, things in Pisces, things in Aquarius. And so we're having four planets in Pisces. This is it. It's going to be this way. Once Thursday comes for the rest of April, four planets in Pisces. And so this is a very interesting dynamic. And it's a beautiful thing to be able to tune into that spirit. But Mars cautions us. Mars says, look, um, if someone approaches you and you're not sure what they or their motive is, you need to look deeply into this. If someone approaches you and you you don't know them and they're aggressive with you, you need to look into this. You know, it's Mars in Pisces is aggressive without being knowing it's aggressive in, in a variety of ways. Like for example, Mars and Pisces can be, you know, somebody like it's a, like a having Mars go through your twelfth house. Pisces twelfth house, or you know, Pisces rules the twelfth house. Not in everyone's individual chart, but generally speaking, Pisces is the twelfth house sign. So the energy of the twelfth house is similar to Pisces. And when Mars goes through, if you've ever had a Mars transit through your twelfth house, which you have, because it'll go through there every two years. There may be times when you sit, like, you're in line at the bakery. This happened to me. I was in line at the bakery, and I asserted myself. Somebody tried to get in front of me, and I said, no, I was next. And you feel like you've made a capital offense by saying, no, I was next at the bakery. <laughs> or someone looks at you like, whew, you're aggressive. And it comes out in a way that is not, um, <laughs> it's not soft. It's Mars. <laughs> It's like, hey, I was next. <laughs> but that's not how you said it at all. It's like, move over, I was next. It's not that way. You said, excuse me, I was next. And but everyone heard it as, hey, I was next. <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> like you were shoved aside. And you know, if someone accuses you of being pushy, it's during Mars and Pisces. And Mars, it's it's a pushy Mars without asserting itself as being pushy. 
It's like something behind you, like a ghost or something, is acting without your conscious consent. <laughs> and it's kind of funny at times, but then it's not. Anyone who lives with Mars and Pisces or lives with Mars in the 12th, which I think may be harder than Mars and Pisces, gets this. They're like, yeah, people think I'm like brusque and abrasive and I don't think I'm like that. Well, you don't think you're like that because it's operating without you consciously knowing this is Pisces. It's the realm of the unconscious. It's the sleep and dream realms. So wow, are our dreams going to be active for the rest of the month? It's like, whoa, did you get sleep last night? Wow, it was active. I was running a race in my sleep last night. Yeah. And Mars will make things feel like you might be, am I being conned or not? Is this a con or not? And you have to be astute beyond astute to get past whatever that is. Now, it's different. If someone refers you to someone and you think you're being conned, that's not good. <laughs> you have to trust that your friend who referred, now maybe you have a really good friend who said, wait, I have someone for you to see. And whatever that may be, a banker, a psychotherapist, an astrologer. And you go in and you're like, well, I don't know if I trust this person. Um, and you have to use your discernment. You must use your discernment. It's important. And you also need to trust. If it's one of your dairy friends who would never steer you wrong, then of course they're not gonna they're not gonna do that. So be very cautious with Mars and Pisces and use it to your advantage. Um, it's a subtle energy. It does not um it's not a flashy Mars. It's not Mars and Sagittarius, you know, where Mars is out there and making things happen and woohoo, we're getting on an airplane. Woohoo, we're going surfing. We're, we're like, you know, driving the, driving the dune buggy on the beach. And it, it, no, <laughs> this is Mars and Pisces. And the other thing about Mars and Pisces is we're going to want to sleep. So thankfully, this is sort of a holiday week, at least where I am. And next weekend's a holiday. Get sleep. Get some sleep. And, you know, even if your dreams are active, this is like we are entering some restful time, a time when we want to rest, a time when we want to take notice of what rest means to us um, and how that feels. And, you know, and it's also like being spiritual in, again, in another way. So we've got a very spiritual week coming up and, um, you know, it's no accident it's happening during this week where Christians celebrate, you know, um, Easter and, and Holy Week. Um, I always loved Easter when I was a kid because it was like this great time of year when spring was happening. And I went to Catholic elementary school, so, you know, you got a week and a half off. <laughs> and it was like, yeah. And in third grade, I had the mumps several weeks before Easter vacation. So I had three weeks of Easter vacation in in you know, in third grade, because I was out sick with the mumps, and then I got recovered, and it was Easter vacation, and there you go. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was a, that was quite an Easter. Um, <laughs> anyway, infectious diseases, there's Mars and Pisces. <laughs> um, yeah, Pisces and Virgo are the healing, are the healing, uh, signs. They're the signs of healing. And speaking of um, Virgo Pisces oppositions, we're having a full moon. There won't be Virgo Pisces this time. That was the last full moon. But the full moon on Saturday is at 26 degrees of Libra, which means the sun will be at 26 degrees of Aries. This is the end of um, the sign of Aries. And eventually we're going to go into Taurus as April progresses. But 26 degrees of Libra and Aries is going to square Pluto, which is at 28 degrees of Capricorn. So that full moon is going to trigger Pluto and Capricorn. And, you know, the moon will square Pluto on Saturday the 16th when the full moon is. Uh, it will square Pluto after it makes the opposition to the sun, which brings the full moon. The sun-moon opposition will be 2.55 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday, and then the moon squares Pluto at 5.57 p.m. Eastern time, so two hours later, and then the moon will, it will go void after making that square to Pluto, and then the moon will enter Scorpio, 8.23 p.m. next Saturday Eastern time. 
And then what's going to be interesting is, you know, then we have another planet in water, of course, and then the sun won't square Pluto till Easter Monday, the 18th. Um, and that's when, you know, Mercury and Uranus are going to meet in Eastern time, whereas Easter, they'll meet Pacific time. And they are going to be very, um, they're going to be very, it's going to be an interesting, interesting Easter in a couple days. The end of April is coming fast, and that's when the eclipse is. So when that full moon happens on Saturday the 16th, remember that it opens the door to the eclipses. And even though it's not an eclipse, and it won't be an eclipse till the 30th, which is a very active time of the month, um, it's going to be a very um, in interesting introduction to eclipse season as you know, full moon squares Pluto and then the sun squares Pluto and Mercury and Uranus join. And the other thing is that when that eclipse happens, it's very close to Uranus. So that, you know, we're getting a flavor of the eclipse, I think, in advance. So pay attention and we'll talk more about that next week. And then what happens? So right now the moon is in Leo and it stays in Leo until the middle of the night on Tuesday um, Tuesday morning, that is. So it's going to oppose Mars and make a, in conjunct of Pluto. And then what's going to happen is it's going to go void opposing Mars at 6, 16 a.m. Tuesday morning. And then it's going to enter Virgo at 10, 07 a.m. So Virgo is opposite Pisces. And so Virgo, the moon will be in Virgo from Tuesday morning and it will continue to go through Virgo until, um, it goes into Libra on Thursday at 4.46 p.m. So um, it goes void on Thursday at 2.11 p.m. as it trines Pluto. But then a few hours later, it's not a very long void. So it's interesting because, you know, Virgo, for those few days, it's going to oppose all those things in Pisces. So there you go. There you go. So how interesting. Um, and then we move into the moon in Libra. It goes into Libra, and then it has the full moon on Saturday, and it will go void squaring Pluto on Saturday at 5.57 p.m. Eastern Time. And then it goes into Scorpio, like I said, and then it'll be in Scorpio for the rest of Saturday and Sunday. Um, and that's about it for this week. I will see you on Easter Sunday. Again, thank you so much for listening. In the meantime, if you have any questions and would like a session with me, whether it be astrology or New Vision Holographic System or fifth dimension Reiki, you can book a session with me online, um, the goldenastrologer.com book online. You can also study Reiki with me and it's a beautiful, powerful system and I am finding deeper and more profound uses for it every day. So I highly recommend, you know, if you have questions about it, you can get in touch with me, info at the goldenastrologer.com or find me on Instagram, the golden astrologer and where I also will post videos about what's going on and videos about Reiki and, you know, astrology and all good things. And I'm on Twitter at Deb Astrology. And I bid you a beautiful Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. Make the most of it. Make a big wish to the universe and embrace the universe and universal energies and spirit guides and nature. And I bless you all this week. Much gratitude and love to all for listening. Thank you and see you next week.